Red Emma by Carol Bolt yeah. was done here. Yeah. And you knew Carol from the Playwrights Co-op. Mm-hmm. So did she, did, you, did she know Martin as well, or did she propose Red Emma, or did you guys go to her and say, hey, what about a play about Emma Goldman? Well, I think she came in with it uh, to be done as a musical, which was unusual, you know. Right. And uh, I, you know, it worked very well as a, as a musical. And it was a celebration of somebody who was somebody yeah. in a weird way. Uh, it, it ended their life here in Toronto. And uh, I, I think it was pretty much her idea. Right. The Carol. But we all kind of knew about her. And we were quite taken, I really recall, with the idea of doing it as a musical. Right. Yeah. But it wasn't in the end. Because I had already, see, done a serious uh, thing uh, uh, as a musical, and it was a show that, that was called, uh, um, 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 um. it was about the ra 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 raid on Dieppe, uh, right. disaster during World War. Too. And uh, I'd, I had again done that as a musical, you see. So that it wasn't the first one we'd done like that. That was about a serious subject, uh, but done in a way that you had a little relief now and again, you know. Red Emma and the performance in there, uh, uh, Chappelle Jaffe mm -hmm. uh, and that company, directed by Martin Kinch, in that building there kind of changed my career. I'd been, I'd been in London, I was living in New York, I was working in New York, I didn't know whether I wanted to come back here. Uh, and I came on and I saw Red Emma in that space. I found the show interesting, but there was something in the atmosphere inside that room with that cast that got me. Put it together. And I thought, I felt there was a community here and I felt the conviction of the community and I felt the excitement of the community and I said, I'm coming home. Mm -hmm. And without seeing that production, I may not be back. I may not have come back. But there was something in the air inside that building during that show that, that really caught me, and sort of told me what I wanted to do with my life. Yeah. We had the same sort of thing happen to us uh, with regard to Ondaatje's play, you know, the Billy the Kid. And when I was at Stratford, I had given him, he was a, then a starving writer in London, Ontario. And I had given him, a, I don't know, a thousand bucks or something to write a children's play that we would put on, Stratford would put on in Ottawa, in the schools. And he finally came in and he says to me, I, I cannot write a children's play. And that's all there is to it. And I can't give you back your thousand dollars either because I'm broke, but uh, I have, uh, I've written a novel, sort of a novel, and uh, I'd like you to read it and see if it, it could be made into a play or something. I said, what is it? He said, you know, the works of Billy the Kid. I said, oh, it sounds very interesting. So I read it, my eyes popping out, you know. It was in, in handwriting. I went into Bill Wiley, I says, what do we pay for uh, rights to uh, unpublished work? He said, oh, whatever we can get away with. I said, well, can we give on a thousand bucks? He said, yeah. Okay, so I phoned on I said, I read your book. It's real good. It has all kinds of potential, and uh, we would like to take, uh, you know, the uh, right to put it on stage. Uh, and you get proper royalties when it's done, but a thousand bucks just to for you to sign something, we'll sign something. Oh, great! And I said, and you can forget about the other thing. So that that was how Red Emma got going. How does it work with Billy the Kid? Um, Billy the Kid. Yeah. And, and but and let, I, let me get this straight. Michael Andachi, the Booker Prize winner, said to you that he could not write a children's play <laughs> no. and wanted to give you his commission back. Except he had no money. 
Wow. Yeah, well then I went to uh, Gascon. I said, this will make a terrific play. And because there was, a, he was there as an artistic director. Wiley was a manager. And, uh, but we need a proper uh, venue for it. And the, the old uh, uh, roller skating rink is up for grabs right now. So why don't you talk to the board into uh, buying it? Because that would be the ideal place to put us, Billy the Kid. And uh, so we went and looked at the old rink, you know. Which became the Tom Patterson. Yeah, that's right. And uh, he said, yeah, good idea. I thought it was a curling. Wasn't it the Tom Patterson? Wasn't that a curling rink? Or was that a well, Maybe it was both. <laughs> A roller, a roller derby rink. It, it was a, it was at one point a roller skating rink. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no. But that's how you know we put things together in those days, you know. But that's also Tom Henry walking down the street in Stratford, thinking about Canadian work and alternative work well, and small spaces, and then looking at an abandoned rink, and Tom Henry going, hmm, ding. <laughs> So how many lives, how many times in your life do you go ding and here's a, here's a theater seventy seven and ding there's John Hirsch and Manitoba theaters there and ding here's John Free Theater with Palmer and Cage and ding there's the there's the Tom Patterson Theater I mean Tom Henry how just too dinging often. is like too often <laughs> yeah Winnipeg was you know the big startup for me but let's go let's go back to Winnipeg later I want to talk a bit because you collect the works of Billy the Kid. Mm -hmm. Which was then done first in Stratford, mm -hmm. in the roller rink. Yeah. Then it was produced here at the Toronto Free Theatre when you were here mm -hmm. in 77, 78, I think, somewhere in there. I've forgotten the exact date. I was in it. Yeah. That's why I remember it. And I sort of remember you around the background, but I, it was mainly Martin. Yeah. But this space was very... I remember that in this space, the Toronto Free Theatre, they kept moving the stage mm -hmm. so they could... You could orientate it any way you wanted to. Yeah. And this one, it was swung, so the theater was against the north, uh, the stage was against the north wall. Yeah. And the audience was against the south wall. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that we lost when, once it got, right. you know, real. That's yeah. the production that I remember sitting in the co ed reservoir, about to go on and watching the snow blow under the door <laughs> over my feet. <laughs> I thought, Toronto Free Theatre, yeah, okay. So I watched the snow come into the dressing room. If it was only snow, what, uh, we, used to, we used to worry that somebody's going to sneak in for free. Because <laughs> the door was always open. Right. Yeah. And how many years did it last, the Toronto Free Theatre being free? Uh, oh, prices? God, only about two, two, two years. Right. Yeah. And then we had a real pressure, you know, from our fellow theater people and by the uh, Ontario Arts Council and the Canada Council. Mm -hmm. They all pressured you to charge money? Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Did you agree with that pressure? Uh, we didn't agree, but uh, we wanted to have a theater. And the only way to have the theater and keep the, the ticket price low was to get subsidy. As it was, I mean, the actors were not being paid huge amounts, as well you know. And uh, certainly the management got whatever you guys got, that's what we got. Now, Neil Monroe played Billy in Billy the Kid in Stratford. That's right. And Nick Mancuso played it here. He played Billy the Kid. That's right, yeah. Can you remember the two productions and compare them a little? Uh, Not that I'm wanting to say ours was better, but... Well, they both had a, a, like a... What, a char character? Of their own, of its own, and, and I, I, in fact, I remember talking to Martin about that, the, the difference between Stratford and here, and uh, the thing was that uh, it wasn't a script. 
all we had was the novel. Right. And we used that to make a script. And our script was a little bit different than the script oh, okay. in Stratford. Yeah. Right. And that was, and that was enough to give it a characteristic of its own, you know. Because Stratford's production was a classical theater company doing a very modern, imagistic, poetic work. Yeah. The Toronto Free Theater's production was that of, I don't want to say street performers, but non-classical actors, grassroots yeah. actors, yeah. doing the same kind of work. Yeah. So that must have been. And it was similar, but not...